Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of uh, Mastercraft Fishing. And uh, you know what? Guess what? Look what came in. Alright, so now we have our uh, new controller. And uh, this is a SMC 5-5-NN. It's a 6-axis controller, I do believe, or 5. Let's see here. One, two, three, yes, five. So it's a five axis controller. I don't know why I said six, because the other one's a six axis controller, which is a piece of crap. But at any rate, so this is gonna go in. And uh, what this is gonna do is, uh, this is gonna replace Mach 3. We're getting that the hell out of here. And uh, all of the little cards and trinkets and things that try to make things run, it's all contained in this one little unit. And uh, basically all your connections are in the back. And from what they tell me, it's uh, simple to hook up. I mean, I've hooked up tons of electronics and from what I can see on the back, it looks pretty straightforward to me. Doesn't mean it's going to be, but we're gonna give it a shot. One thing about this controller is that it did not come with instructions nothing not one thing so kind of there's no tutorials there's one guy uh, CNC ninja who did an overview on it basically going through all the menus so I mean that'll be pretty much somewhat helpful uh, you know basically the thing that I'm waiting for now is a power supply and uh, to power this unit because it takes uh, 12 volt and 3 amps or you could do 24 volts and up to 3 amps so I ordered a uh, 12 volt one uh, I probably should have ordered the 24 but it was going to be a lot more expensive and it should work just fine um, it's only a little a little unit so uh, the worst thing that would happen is you know the power supply may get a little bit warm if this is drawing a lot of current but I can't see that it will but if that's the case then we'll just add a fan onto it and uh, until it burns itself out and then we'll just buy a 24 volt if needed all right so uh, let's go into the shop and I'll show you exactly what's going to be done before we can uh, you know basically get the controller installed I don't know if any of you remember shop cat or not but he uh he's 21 years old now he just likes to kind of hang out he's not so much of a, a shop kitty anymore just likes to he kind of left alone in his bed here huh bud yep likes to take long naps and that's about it he's retired now that's what he is Okay, so here we are back in the shop and uh, so for this here uh, we need a place to mount it and my thoughts are right here and the reason for that is uh, that way there I can have access to all its controls I think I'll probably build it out to about there and I'll probably run something around here to capture the wires and uh, that way there I can have full control of it you know I could put it on a swing arm or something like that if we wanted to but then you got chances of it wobbling but and then you know there's other things you'll probably have to hold this while you're typing so I think just a nice firm mount like this will uh, do this justice and I'll show you what we're getting rid of because what we're about to get rid of has been a long time coming and I am glad that they uh, have started coming out with something like this I'm hoping I'm really hoping this is gonna work because uh, I need this right now um, I mean sure I'd like to get into a better machine but we just don't have the kind of funds to be able to do that yet uh, eventually though Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna bring it on over to uh, here and 
We'll show you all the things that gotta come out of there. Um, this computer over here, that's no longer gonna be there. Um, so we're gonna actually gain some space over there, which will be nice. Um, maybe I'll move the table down a bit or something like that. Uh, there'll be, you know, more space to, you know, spread the computers out and, you know, just space is good. All right, so uh, let me get this camera situated and uh, we'll show you all the, you know, kind of electronics and all the stuff we're going to have to go through to get this going. And I'll show you the material I'm probably going to use to, um, to make the frame. Uh, for this to bolt to and you know we're gonna have to do some preliminary tests on it on the bench to make sure I can get relays to work and that way there the spindle will come on the coolant will come on when the program tells it to and um, I'd eventually like to be able to set up my tool changer again so that I can uh, that's why I got uh, so many axes here uh, Basically, uh, your X and your Y move the table. This is your X. Your Y moves your table in and out. Um, your Z moves your axis up and down, kind of like a drill press, if you will. And uh, that's for those who don't know much about CNC's. And you have a A and a B axis. Now, what these do is uh, your A axis normally controls a rotary function meaning that uh, you can rotate parts and machine them all the way around in uh, you know basically 360 degrees or actually I'm not even going to get it now but the tool changer you'll be able to rotate the tools around so that you can pick each individual tool up uh, your B axis is for another uh, swivel and that you know, could be that you have your head turning like this, or you have another sort of rotating feature here. And um, so that's where you get all five axes is your X, your Y, your Z, your A, and your B. All right, so let's uh, stop, you know, mumbling here, and uh, we'll get you down there and show you what's going to go on. So essentially, all of this here is uh, going to be going away. This controls um, turning the spindle on now and the coolant because uh, we had lost that control when uh, we had an electronic malfunction before. The card decided to eat itself alive and burn out. And that is due to Mach 3 and a computer issue. And that's why we're moving on from there. This here, this dial, is how I control my speed now uh, to make the tool uh, go from basically an edge finder, which is around 1200 RPM. Uh, and as you go up, I just pencil marked in different speeds. And this machine will do up to 8500 RPM. Uh, normally, I don't push it past 7500 because... Uh, I mean, I know the bearings can take it, but there's no need to really abuse it. 7,500 for this little machine, uh, you know, basically you could move at, you know, 200 inches a minute. And this machine isn't really capable of doing that and be rigid enough. So 7,500 is fine. I'll use that for little drills and whatnot. So next, here comes the fun part. Hopefully, I can get this set up and I'll show you. Okay. So as it stands now, we have uh, basically a whole bunch of electronics in this cabinet. And these are all power supplies uh, right there. Need something to hold this dang door open with. And this will do. Box of parts. <laughs> Spare parts, that is. Uh, these are all the motion controller cards. 
That's what controls the motors to move. Um, this card here is the card that's a piece of crap. Don't buy one of those things. I'll take you in for a better look so you can see. And then, if you ever build a CNC machine, don't buy one. Those. Those things are junk. They uh, they can't do math. Uh, the probing features don't work. Uh, your ins and outputs don't work. Nothing works. Except the movement and that's about it. And it can only figure out straight lines. Anytime you throw arcs at it or anything like that, forget it thing just chews up parts like no tomorrow I mean it could be the computer I'm using which is this one here it's a Dell it's I mean a really good one too I mean back in its day it was top of the line and it is running Vista which was also not really the best of operating systems but it's all I had so with that all of those let me get you back up on the bench here so now with all that all of those electronics have to come out I have to actually pull um, that whole big thing out and I'll put it on uh, this bench here so I can open it up and I can work on it, get everything wired in. Um, you know, we'll build our rack for this. We'll mount it here. And we'll probably move that whole power panel down underneath it. So I don't have to, you know, manipulate a lot of wires all over the place. Because one thing, the longer the run of the wire, the bigger the wire you're going to need. And that gets expensive. And it all has to be shielded cable so that no signals can pass between cables because if that happens you're going to have another world of problems because it'll start feeding off of each other and then your machine won't you know read right either way so you know everything's going to be isolated so the shorter the run of cables the better off you are all right so um i'm going to uh, start on this project and i'll take you a little bit you know through it as I go along so here's what I got going on so far is uh, we're going to use this stuff here which is uh, basically it's sort of a 80 20 it's called quick frame and you can put uh, plastic inside of the slots and uh, which we do have some from when we built our uh, enclosure for the machine so this is kind of leftover stuff but essentially what's going to happen is I got to cut in some notches into here so that this fits you know kind of snug in there and uh, then the controller is going to bolt in like this and there'll be a, a piece of plastic down here and uh, Basically, I'll have room for emergency stop button and then I'll probably have like a start and stop button here so that I can, you know, uh, basically there is a play button up here. So I'm not too sure what I'll do right down here as of yet. So, and then we've got uh, these short pieces and those are going to go in the back like that, but on the other side obviously and that way there I can do all the wiring in there um, I may even mount uh, the new power supply that's coming in here uh, so we have to wait for some parts we're waiting on uh, these little connectors and what that does is it just connects all of this together uh, and uh, they fit in here like that and I'm not going to do it, obviously, because once you put this together, you can't get it apart. But essentially, 
this pushes down to here and that pushes up to there and it creates just a, uh, a nice joint. So with that being said, the, um, we're just waiting for some more parts to come in and uh, then we'll finish up this controller and get it mounted to the machine. But I'll show you what I'm doing for now in the process. Okay, so what we're doing for now is uh, while we wait for these parts to come in is uh, we're taking our new stock, the uh, stock that we cut off and uh, we're fly cutting it and we're bringing it to uh, the size on our print over here and I mean that'll keep us busy. It's pretty much the most boring part of it all but uh, it's got to be done so. I'm not running coolant with this because it just makes a mess for the fly cutter so I just dab a little oil. Put our guard down. So, with that being said, I guess uh, we'll probably see you guys next week, and uh, hopefully by then we'll have in all our parts, and we can start to put this controller together, and until then, I'm going to keep on going down with these showdown parts, and try to get as much done as I can before I tear this machine completely apart. Alrighty, until next week, guys, we'll see you later. Bye.